I'm just saying that we have in the past five years demonstrated the ability to generate a lot of alpha. Uh, and therefore, we believe that if this does pan out the way we think, uh, we should be able to do a better job. of various sectors like automobiles, pharmaceuticals, especially in the mid-cap space, he's got very deep understanding about Indian equity markets. So he's graduated uh, from New Delhi and he's also a chartered accountant, started his career with ICICL, followed by his stint with HSBC Securities, Pariva Capital, IDFC, SSKI Securities. His last employment was, was as a Managing Director Research at BOFA Maryland, uh, where he worked for almost 11 years before founding M percent. So he is the founder of M percent capital. He's been running AIF success, AIF strategy, uh, CAT three, AIF uh, successfully for over the last seven, eight years now. And so we thought, why not we would hear from him directly? Uh, what are his uh, thoughts? So over to you, Arun. Thank you so much for uh, joining the call. Um, thanks, Vikas. Uh, and thanks uh, to the AIF experts, uh, EMS experts for inviting me to this one clip. Um, I have, I'll start with a brief presentation, just five slides. Of course, it's a voluminous presentation, but I'll just make uh, 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 just five slides. Uh, I believe the topic uh, to discuss here is about uh, challenges and opportunities in Indian equities. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's what we'll talk about. And after that, you can shoot with any questions you may have. Um, yeah, can you see the slide? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very good. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, like all markets, I mean, uh, India is also uh, faced with uh, uh, challenges uh, now and then. Uh, and uh, uh, we believe that uh, uh, the challenges are not just in terms of uh, how the market's been valued, and that's obviously the biggest challenge today in investing in our markets. Uh, but uh, more importantly, the uh, uh, the, the 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 more uh, matter situation where we find ourselves in, uh, rural stress and jobs availability are the biggest uh, stress points in our country today. Uh, as uh, we found out, uh, uh, I mean, we've been talking about the situation for some time, uh, but uh, when the elections results did come out, uh, it was highlighted even more. Um, uh, as you can see in this chart, which I've represented here, uh, uh, the last five years, uh, the job market has been very, very sluggish. Uh, and combined with uh, uh, the poor agricultural output in the last couple of years, uh, this has caused a lot of rural distress. Um, uh, and you can see this whole chart, which has been drawn for the last 20 years. Uh, even during Vajpayee's time, Prime Minister Vajpayee's time, uh, the job generation was far, far higher than where we find ourselves uh, where we found ourselves in the last five years. Um, and that is probably one of the reasons why uh, we saw the kind of election results we did. Although it was a mandate uh, 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 returning the government for the, back for the third term, it was also a kind of a, 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 a warning that uh, unless this is mended, uh, the electoral politics will, uh, electoral situation is, uh, is going to uh, turn a little uh, difficult for the current uh, uh, government. Uh, also, uh, what this rural distress and uh, ag institution has done is that uh, it has created a lot of unequal economic growth. Um, and this is the biggest risk that we feel uh, to the India story. Um, uh, like we see in the chart left on the left hand side, we saw how job regeneration has uh, weakened in the last five years. It has also led to very poor consumption growth, uh, as you can see in the uh, right hand side slide. Uh, we believe that uh, if the government is able to execute uh, schemes such as uh, PLI and infra-related uh, construction, uh, along with the, uh, the monsoon recovery which uh, has been forecast, uh, uh, it, can job, it can drive better job generation and also address uh, rural distress. Um, the good news is that uh, that economic growth has started to improve and we believe that the next five years is going to be far better than what we have seen in the last five years. Uh, one of the key uh, positives which has come out of 
uh, the post covid situation is the government has been um, uh, has maintained financial discipline and um, fiscal policies have contained uh, deficit to a large extent inflation has been by and large under control uh, so we believe that uh, better growth uh, combined with uh, dovish monetary and fiscal policies are going to be the key drivers of uh, economic and uh, therefore corporate uh, growth in, uh, going forward and uh, if this does pan out as the way we think it should uh, then you will obviously get more equitable growth uh, and that's going to be good for the country in general and obviously stock markets uh, in particular um we think that the government will in our opinion prioritize job growth and also revitalize uh, uh, rural economy um as a result uh, assuming that this, this that this does pan out uh, we believe that uh, india's corporate earnings will register uh, 50 to 20% growth in the next 5 years uh, i mean if you typically look at it uh, you have gdp growth projected at about 7% for next year add by add inflation we get a nominal uh, gdp growth of about 13% um and then corporate growth typically uh, should be higher than that uh, and that's that's the that's the kind of uh, uh, situation we think should prevail going forward um we have kept our return expectations in stock markets slightly lower uh, because valuations are an issue uh, so even then we think if not 50 to 20% growth Uh, sub 15% kind of uh, uh, returns the stock market can deliver as far as ampersand is concerned and i'm not giving any kind of forward uh, looking uh, 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 targets here i'm just saying that we have in the past 5 years demonstrated the ability to generate a lot of alpha uh, and therefore we believe that if this does pan out the way we think uh, we should be able to do a better job so what do we like um see indian uh, equities typically ours is a growth fund uh, and we typically focus on anything where we see uh, growth uh, is visible uh, and as we have seen in the last couple of years uh, or uh, more uh, the stock markets tend to reward uh, growth disproportionately uh, in the past uh, few years we have seen various sectors uh do well uh, and in, in fact the last couple of years it has been certain themes which have actually done extremely well um as far as our view is concerned we think that industries will continue to do well despite the fact that they have uh, done so well in the last few years uh, add to that you can probably see consumer discretionary uh, discretionary start to pick up uh, of course it also includes autos and real estate which have done well in the last few years uh, so in in our portfolio Uh, these are the two segments which uh, are the dominant uh, themes or sectors uh, where we have exposure to uh, coming to the sectors which a lot of strategists and market participants have been talking about uh, for example fmcg which obviously is a direct play on rural recovery uh, no doubt uh, fmcg will start to grow better than what they have done in the past few years uh, but we still think it's not uh, going to make a big difference in terms of where you should allocate money to uh, sectors like fmcg it uh, will deliver absolute returns uh, but uh, as far as we are concerned we think it is better to focus on industrials and consumer discretionary uh, in terms of themes where we are incrementally uh, incrementally uh, uh, positive um, basically they are subsets of the uh, the sector the large sectors we have already mentioned uh, we like Uh, the energy transition theme which is obviously a subset of the uh, the industrial theme or uh, industrial sector uh, we also like premiumization as a theme uh, which covers a gamut of sectors uh, whether whether it's part of real estate whether it's in consumer uh, so we like premiumization premiumization as a theme uh, and we also like technology and research uh, which i talk about in the next couple of slides um so just a bit on these three uh, sectors why we like uh, them uh, they first of all we think that each of these sectors uh, has uh, a structural uh, uh, they, they they're basically structural in nature yeah, whether uh, uh, and when we talk of structural uh, in nature at least three to five years is where we believe um, uh, that kind of horizon we will see 
uh, these sectors do well. Um, of course, markets typically tend to discount some of this in, in advance, uh, which in some sense has happened uh, in the power sector and some of the industrials. But we think there is a lot, lot more to go uh, before we uh, start to see maturity. Um, within the so I'll talk about the energy transitions uh, space first theme first. Uh, the reason we like this theme and the way we want to play it is because um, we know that the power sector has seen large amount of under uh, investment in the past decade. Uh, obviously, that is starting to catch up. Uh, we have seen a significant capex, government driven capex in the in, in the power sector, uh, uh, and instead of actually playing it through some of the uh, the transmission the pen generators or the uh, the transmission companies we cho choose to play it through the equipment suppliers uh, where we think that uh, uh, the way the, those those companies are managed is, is much better and the, and the growth uh, they they will be able to deliver will be superior to uh, some of the uh, uh, the other utility players or the power uh, power, uh, the power companies uh, so the, some of the companies I've mentioned here, um, uh, just the disclosure, we may own some of these uh, stocks in our portfolio, and uh, but we may not own all of them. Uh, so uh, the, some of the names we've mentioned here, companies like Schneider, uh, AVB, uh, these are equipment companies uh, which largely cater to the power sector. Uh, Cummins, not just an equipment supplier, but also now in the growing theme of data centers, uh, it's a very uh, a significant player. Um, power, there are uh, power sector financiers which uh, facilitate or enable uh, 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 the sector to uh, to uh, to do capex. Uh, and there are of course uh, EP, EPC specialists like uh, uh, LNT and PowerMed. Uh, so these are the com kind of companies which we think can deliver uh, 20 to 25 percent growth over a three to five year period. Uh, and uh, while some of these stocks have seen significant re-rating, uh, so that may not be possible. But as long as earnings, the stock stock uh, values can track earnings growth, uh, we are quite content. Um, coming to the second theme, premiumization, uh, it's like I said, it doesn't just cover uh, one particular sector. It, it covers a gamut of sectors. I mean, obviously, the autos, uh, uh, you've seen it through... Uh, uh, companies like uh, Aishan Motor, which is a premium play on motorcycles, uh, and there are hotel companies, uh, hotel ho there are hotel co companies like Indian Hotels and East India Hotels, uh, and there are also platform companies like Zomato, uh, which uh, uh, fall under, under this category. Um, we have, have, have even included a company like Varun Beverages, which was earlier a, a vanilla franchisee of Pepsi, but moment it actually switched over to um, the energy drink uh, uh, sting, uh, the whole, uh, uh, the way the market perceived the company, that completely changed uh, in favor of uh, uh, the stock. Uh, and these are the kind of, um, and then we have fashion retailers like uh, Trend. Uh, so these are the kind of uh, companies and sectors which we think can deliver uh, uh, not just uh, uh, above uh, 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 above uh, Nifty growth, but also a uh, very high high ROE uh, generating companies. Um, finally, uh, when I talk of technology R and D, uh, these you cannot play. Uh, India is not a company which actually uh, has patented technology, and it obviously is far far from it. Uh, but it does have companies which uh, can become vendors to uh, some of these. Uh, uh, companies which uh, uh, some of the American or the, uh, the other developed economies. Um, uh, so a few examples of that, for example, Oracle uh, uh, can become an outsourcing hub for its parent, uh, which is engaged in uh, 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 the newer technologies like AI uh, and obviously now collaborating with uh, Google. Uh, so uh, see this, these are some of the names which uh, in the IT space where we like, which we like. Um, and uh, th then they have. There are these uh, pure play contract uh, manufacturing research companies, pharma companies, um, as opposed to the uh, the the usual generic companies which uh, uh, markets focus on. Uh, we like the uh, the CRAMS uh, and the contract manufacturing companies because, again, for the same reason, uh, India is 
um, uh, has the resources to uh, lower R&D cost by making uh, cheaper uh, inputs uh, for these innovators. Uh, so some of them, uh, which we all we also own, uh, uh, the likes of Newland and uh, DVs, uh, we think could be vastly benefit from this uh, uh, from this trend. Uh, so I'll stop here. It's been a brief uh, five slides. I mean, I have a lot of it to talk about, but uh, we can probably address that through uh, Q&A. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. You can hear me, right? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah, I can. I will, uh, my only question is that I will read your mind about the challenges, you know, while you talk about it. But what are the other challenges uh, that you see as a fund manager? Um, maybe geographically you want to talk about that geo aspect or maybe you know, talk about anything else which can become a risk or yes a, a yes sorry to interrupt you see uh, the reason i actually had that slide on challenges which was little i thought it was more relevant from the market perspective uh, because the usual challenges those don't go away i mean today of course the biggest challenge of course is that uh, how do you actually by this market, which clearly is overvalued in several segments, right? And that's the biggest challenge. Uh, and not just that, uh, it's also, uh, you're basically chasing momentum and it's, it's something which we are not very comfortable with. These are, th see, if you've identified certain themes in advance, uh, then you can probably relate to what's happening in the market. Uh, and then you can probably play that entire cycle. Uh, that's the way we think is the best way to do it. Uh, but if you're actually just jumping into the bandwagon and saying that, you know, uh, markets are going to not correct at all, uh, that won't happen. There will be large bouts of correction. We have seen that every year market correct uh, at least twice, if not more. And at least one correction could be quite brutal. Uh, now, whether that's happened on June 4th or not, we don't know. But uh, usually these, these corrections do happen uh, more frequently than we wanted to. Uh, so valuations, obviously, for us is a bit, bit of an issue. But like I said, uh, we have taken uh, that into cognizance when we actually consider our portfolio. We have companies which are richly valued. But the reason why they are richly valued is because every time they have actually come out with their numbers, uh, they have actually surprised significantly on the upside. And as long as that continues, we think that valuations will not be a big issue. But the moment you actually start seeing some kind of tapering of growth or some, some kind of uh, situation where expectations are just about met, being met, uh, then uh, these valuations will, will come under question and you will see uh, stocks come off quite, uh, uh, quite sharply. Uh, so the companies we typically try and avoid are the ones where uh, uh, which don't have, we either, which either have a very short track record or which don't have a track record at all. So something like a trend, for example, uh, it is, we invested it far much earlier than COVID uh, and we're still holding on to it. Not obviously we did not know that the company will deliver the extent to which it has uh, and the stock will get re-rated to the extent which it has. But uh, those are the kind of challenges which, which the market probably can visualize today. And what do you do if, if you have a company like trend, do you actually go ahead and buy it or do you ride the whole way, uh, whole cycle uh, and so we, we typically have a hold and buy and hold strategy and we try and hold stocks as long as we believe the cycle is uh, uh, buoyant and uh, uh, that's that's been our uh, philosophy. Um, the second thing, of course, is that I mean, it's I, uh, in terms of liquidity, which has been a real problem in India, uh, liquidity of not just in terms of getting into micro caps or small caps, today even the mid cap companies which have seen large uh, uh, increase in the market caps uh, are fairly liquid. Uh, uh, but having said that, what we try and do uh, to, to, to mitigate that to some extent, uh, are we have a multi-cap portfolio. Uh, we are market cap agnostic, but at the same time, we ensure that at least 40% of what uh, we own uh, by, by design or by, you know, uh, or, or by choice or design happens to be companies which are uh, fairly large or have the potential to become large. When I say fairly large, it, it, it need not be a nifty stock. It can be a nifty junior stock. Uh, and some of the stocks that you own, a lot of stocks that you own 
or uh, uh, or part of the junior nifty uh, so liquidity is one issue we did, we actually try and uh, uh, handle that by uh, having a judicious mix of large companies uh, liquid companies uh, uh, so that we play both growth and uh, 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 mitigate risk to the, some extent uh, we don't typically uh, invest in micro caps or uh, or stocks which are listed in other exchanges but i'm not saying that one should not do it uh, one obviously uh, one has the that risk taking ability or understanding of these companies uh, one one pretty much can but our strategy has been simply remain in large companies uh, b- uh, which of course have growth as the primary focus yeah uh, the other thing that i want to uh, uh, read your mind about is the current valuations while you covered yeah. up to some extent but particularly uh, because of the sebi categorization you know your yeah. mid caps are a sweet spot yeah. from yeah. 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 Hundred and one to fifty stocks, you know, yes. and we see a lot of uh, yeah, locations uh, has come in in that space. So, do you think that has become more of expensive zone now, or they look to be in, uh, attractive zone? You see, uh, you know, when you actually again when you go for you uh, classify it as the uh, the hundred hundred to two fifty as that segment. Uh, I won't agree with you, but having said that, you're right. I mean, there are lots of uh, uh, pockets which are expensive and which are unreachable in that sense. Uh, but it did not be just mid caps. I mean, uh, there's been this common notion that mid cap is expensive and uh, nifty stocks are, are are not so expensive or relatively inexpensive. Uh, but there's a reason for that, right? Obviously, nifty stocks have very little visibility. Not all of them. Some of them have visibility and are, are still. Uh, uh in some sense undervalued uh, for example the banks some of the banks are have underperformed for a very very long time and there are there are reasons for that uh, but having said that uh, there are pockets which are relatively uh, attractive uh, in the large caps but there are, there are also pockets which are not so uh, expensive in mid caps uh, if i may say so but uh, it's it's like for, for us we basically have a we we have we are a multi cap scheme we 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 are we just have a 30 30 stock portfolio we don't we don't deviate too much from that 30 to 32 we don't deviate too much from that uh, but clearly today markets are in such a situation where everybody is finding an idea in every stock and that i think is not something which uh, is very healthy okay okay and what about the current government uh, did you expect this kind of result or you think you think that uh, this would be sustainable and this government would be able to complete their five years or do you see uh, uh, thankfully i am not a sophologist so i can say whatever i want to so <laughs> but uh, but having said that uh, you know all of us expected uh, the bjp to come back for its third term it so happened that we forgot there was an nda uh, and we only spoke of bjp bjp um uh, but none i think none of us uh, except i think the sophologists and some of these tv channels which went overboard uh, none of us actually believed that it could be 350 plus and frankly it, it, it didn't even matter whether it is going to be 350 plus or 300 it didn't really matter and frankly as you don't as you look, look back today on on 4th june Uh, just because it is 291 uh, it, it hasn't mattered right and markets have become so euphoric uh, uh, because that particular day when uh, markets were nervous that it was uh, it was probably going to be a situation where some of the allies may not actually team up with the nda the uh, markets did panic and that would have been a real uh, shocker for everybody uh, but the fact that uh, one of the main constituents of the nda is, is a party Uh, uh, led by uh, uh, Mr. Naidu, who's who's very similar to uh, whose way of thinking is very similar to the BJP. I mean, obviously, uh, he's won elections because of a certain uh, a certain bent of philosophy, and he's lost elections for the same reason. Uh, I mean, he's completely growth oriented and development oriented. So, the, so I don't think that's going to change too much. You are going to possibly see a situation where uh, the biggest ally of uh, the of the government is going to. Uh, stay on. They probably will demand it. That pound of flesh. Of course, we have no way of saying what will happen. Uh, but they will probably stay on. And when you come to the second largest ally, uh, 
the um, uh, uh, the JDU uh, again, uh, uh, Mr. Nitish Kumar. He really doesn't have too much choice, right? To, I mean, he's such that at this stage of his career, I don't think he can actually go back and 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 you know ally with the party whom he, whom he's left. Uh, uh, you know, so I don't think these two parties are really going to uh, create too much issues for the BJP, uh, except for the usual bickerings about you should give either their you know what they would demand from. Uh, uh, the the government. So I think this this uh, government will last five years. But uh, whether they'll uh, uh, win the continue to win elections, especially some of the larger elections like Maharashtra and uh, you know that we don't know. I mean how what how what that what will happen then and how the market will behave uh, we don't know. Yeah. The other thing I will uh, take your views on is. Uh, what are the major reforms you think Indian government, the BJP government must have planned or you see from your eyes that they should be doing it? Over to you. See, uh, prior to June 4th, they probably would have thought of a lot of these uh, political uh, reforms, uh, which probably will go to the back burner. Uh, you know, which may not matter the, to the market, but some things like the UCC and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, one election, one nation, or you know, these things we don't matter really. But these are the these these could have been some of the priorities which the government would have had. Uh, but coming to the economic reforms, uh, I, I think the markets are probably expecting something like a rationalization uh, to the GST, which may or may not happen. Probably may not happen in a hurry um, uh, because the because. All said and done, this government has been very, very uh, disciplined in terms of uh, how to maintain uh, uh, the fiscal uh, uh, discipline. Display had been very, uh, the fiscal situation they have actually been very good at maintaining. Um, uh, the question is that if they have to now start uh, uh, spending more towards, uh, they have to move more towards rural spending. Uh, will they then ignore? Uh, the capex programs which they had uh, earlier, uh, that is a moot point. Uh, at least for the first year, you would probably see a significant push towards rural spending. But but given the fact that you've also seen uh, uh, the RBI uh, give them uh, uh, you know more than a one one point one trillion uh, rupees uh, to uh, for I, I think it, it probably they would be able to manage. Uh, uh, the finances quite well, at least uh, in the first year, year couple of years. Uh, thereafter, it all depends on how these programs take off. Uh, I mean, if they if they do start taking off and they are more comfortable with uh, uh, the situation, uh, then you'll probably see them go back to uh, what they have done best. Okay. So they, you're saying that they might start spending also. Anything on yeah, the... I don't think that's really going to be a problem for them this year at least. I think the tax collections are buoyant, and uh, uh, you know, and there is. The, I don't think that's going to disturb the fiscal situation uh, for at least for the near term. Sure. And uh, uh, keeping the current situation in mind, do you think uh, this year going to be a year of consolidation for mid and small caps, or you continue to see alpha generation? Uh, taking place. So, you know, I mean, if you had asked this question to anybody, let forget speaking to me now, everybody would have told you that we were, we, this would be a year of mid cap consolidation and small cap consolidation. Uh, those particular, those two segments have done, have again led the, the whole, uh, uh, the market this year. Uh, but yes, to some extent, I do think that uh, there will be kind of a, a balancing, uh, uh, there, there will be a, a time when uh, some of the other indices, especially the Nifty, will start to catch up. But of course, something will have to start showing in their uh, in their numbers in terms of uh, growth, or 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 just maybe just maybe some money may just flow in there uh, just to cut risk. Uh, so you will probably see some kind of balancing uh, 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 within all the indices. Having said that. We would continue to have that same balance. I mean, we'll have large companies, a mix of 
mid and small companies i don't think we're going to change much of that um uh, so because we think that if you look at markets in india especially in general uh, it are the it, it, it is the smaller companies which have uh, greater scope to uh, to grow and to scale up and therefore get rewarded um uh, so so yes you're right to some extent you will see you should see some consolidation i'm not saying you will see you should see some consolidation uh, yeah. but uh, but that's a space to be in okay so with that uh, we'll conclude the session here uh, uh, arunji thank you so much for taking the time out and uh, truly appreciate that you join and 